Hey everybody, Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having a great start to the week, man. Uh, a lot going on here, getting the week off to a great start. A lot to be excited about. We got a lot accomplished in the month of, uh, month of April and we're rolling into the month of May. I've got exciting new life news on the personal side that I'm stuck kind of holding close to the vest as things develop, but I'm really excited. Uh, same time, look, man, here we are again. I just dropped a video on this clown, Jason Whit Whitlock, and here he is again. And let me tell you something. One thing I can tell you is Jason Whitlock is the one of the nexuses that point us to the central idea that this post-racial America that everybody's trying to produce and tell us about and share this narrative that, that's being pushed is unreal. Uh, this guy obviously has an agenda. The stuff that he pushes and the obvious patterns that he has uh, are unquestionably along the lines of race. He plays it uh, along and pushes the idea that it's more conservatism than it is racism, but it is definitely along the lines of race because uh, if it's just socially uh, liberal versus conservative issues, you would see a variation of the type of people that he chooses to go at because you can find black conservatives and white conservatives, black liberals and white liberals, but it always seems to be black celebrity or athletes that are low hanging fruit for him or easy targets and he goes after them. Uh, this, this week, uh, he's taking aim at Simone Biles, who doesn't bother anybody. Okay, you go after you go after Angel Reese. Angel Reese brings as gives as much as she gets. She knows how to handle herself, but I'm still going to defend her because the crap that he was spewing about her was incorrect uh, and inaccurate. Um, and he studied pushing this thing. Now, how in the hell? I can even see the erroneous comparisons uh, of Caitlin Clark to. Angel Reese um, and it's a shame that Caitlin Clark gets pulled in this because you know an athlete just doing what she does obviously she has an attitude you better have an attitude if you're going to play at that level I have no problem with her taunting just like I didn't have any problem when she lost and she got taunted that's the game you talk the noise you get the smoke when you don't deliver that's been the game but all of a sudden it was okay with her but when Angel Reese did it Oh my God. And outside of that, you can't say anything bad about this young lady. She is fiery, but she gives back to the community. She's given large sum, um, sums of money as a college athlete uh, back into her community, even playing for scholarships. But he found a way to villainize her. Now, don't get me wrong. It wasn't Jason Whitlock alone that did it. It wasn't him alone that did it. He uh, had the media in general who decided to make Caitlin Clark the hero and Angel Reese the villain. Um, and it's so much that's going on. And, and, and again, uh, I hate to see black faces in places where they could speak truth to power and yet they take it as a chance to notch another uh, notch in their belt. Uh, for white acceptance. Gail King did it to Don Staley uh, in a recent interview. So I got a little something for Gail as well. And here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, Simone Biles posted a simple tweet about her concern when she chose to be more concerned with her mental health than with uh, competing in the Tokyo Olympics four years ago. Or was it three years ago? I know that it was something going on with um, COVID, so it may have been a year late. So we might be just three years out. So whatever it was, Tokyo Olympics. Um, and she said she thought that fans were going to be angry with her, that everybody was going to turn on her. Uh, she never thought she would get the support she got. And that's it. This guy comes out and says she's trying to make herself 
be more important than she really is. Her fame cannot measure up to the fame of Caitlin Clark. And first of all, but now what he's doing, what you've got to understand what he's doing, he's doing a couple of things. He's catering to his core audience, uh, which is actually white middle-aged men. But he's he's catering to them and what there was hot on that plate right now. Caitlin Clark is the hottest thing going right now in in basketball, male or female, and uh, definitely when it comes to uh, white audiences, people who never p thought about basketball, never picked up a basketball in love, never watched basketball, is hyped on this because that's the way she's been apped up. Um, She's a generational player. Can't take nothing away from her. Never seen anybody shoot like that um, in the women's game from that deep. I've seen some great shooters. We had one here in Houston. Cynthia Cooper was a bucket. Uh, I've seen Shamiqua Holesclaw buckets. But just the way she can pull from almost anywhere, I'm giving her her credit. I have no problem doing that because the game to me isn't about race. It's about game. I have no problem acknowledging when I see a player regardless to what their skin tone is. To me, the game is the game inside the lines. And that's the way I look at it. But I also understand the politics that, that are played and how things are leveraged. I know that statements are made uh, inside the lines that the players had no idea that they were making because those those games that are played are being played on more than just who wins the game. So I get that. But my whole thing is take Simone Biles. It has nothing to do with basketball. The only thing she has in common with Kate Litton Clark is she's a female athlete. They're not in the same sport. They're not in the same arena. Uh, they don't have the same interests. None of the things seem to line up. Caitlin is a college graduate who is, well, she, she may not have even graduated yet, but she's a college athlete that's coming out that just been drafted into the WNBA to play professional ball. Hasn't shot one shot in a professional game. And Simone Biles is the most decorated Olympic uh, athlete of all time regardless of sport and he downplayed her in every way he could nobody's checking for her nobody cares for her gymnastics is just this but the thing is you give it a little time and the next big thing pops up and we, we could easily say three years from now the same thing about Caitlin Clark as far as not a lot of people are talking about it. But the more you approach uh, this summer, the more you're going to hear Simone and the less you're going to hear Caitlin unless Caitlin is on the women's team. I don't know. But and if she is great. But my whole thing is enough with this dude. Now, here's what I tell you. His wackies are way better and more loyal than anybody that follows me, my, my small following, because they came for me the last time. I mean, um, just, you know, they did. And now the, the thing is, I don't go back and read their comments. So they're talking to themselves and who else is on there. Uh, and the fact that they're pushing the uh, thumbs down button absolutely has no effect on me. I'm not here to be liked. I said that when I first came on here, what, shoot, 14 years ago. I said, I'm not here to be liked. I'm not, I'm here to deliver the truth. I'm here to talk the truth. I'm here to speak the truth. Now, the very nature of it is, he said that Angel wasn't famous until she taunted Caitlyn. Angel was actually the premier, uh, star in college basketball the year they won the championship until the, the uh, tournament took off and then Caitlin moved up and the way she was playing more people got to see it because nobody was watching Iowa not that Caitlin wasn't playing nobody was watching Iowa you couldn't tell me another player's name on that freaking team especially last year so nobody was watching Iowa but when she got out there and it was she was on a bigger stage people got to see her game and it was a ooh all because she does things that you haven't seen before there's no doubting that and that what and that's what a conversation should be is where her game is and where other people's game is and you talk that noise she's better than her she's better than her but the whole attacking a person but because of a game 
is, you know, especially a black man attacking a young black female. Uh, it's trifling and sorry, and I guarantee you, you're never going to see them do it on our behalf. Um, and again, right is right, but again, I think that as a man, that's a certain way I'm moving. And, and, and with any black sister, I don't care what she's doing, how she's moving, how she's carrying herself. It's just a way that I'm going to handle her because it's a reflection of my manhood and it speaks to who I am. Now, she may get in a position, and I said this the other day, she may get in a position where she just simply does not know how to elevate or is unwilling to elevate. And I will remove myself from the environment and the equation, but I'm never going to deride or degrade her, especially in public where other people can see me do it. That's exactly what they want. And they, they'll they use that because, see, when people see black people deride other black people, they think it automatically eradicates the argument of race, and it does not. Some of the biggest players in the race game in, uh, when it comes to racism as an anti-black mechanism are blacks. Uh Dr. Michael Blanchin once was having a conversation when he with me and I told him that there's not he asked me a question I told him there's nothing more dangerous to black progress than a black person with a white agenda nothing give me your racist man your racist boss your racist CEO your racist politicians and all of those white guys white women I'm good get the right black person with the right presentation and the right conversation and the right charisma and the ability to talk and say the right things and put them in a position where they have the ability to impact something and watch what they do if they're truly not given to the sacrifice they're truly not given to uh the love of the people when they're truly not given when they are more about their pockets when they are more about being in mainstream and accepted see that's the thing about this thing if you're accepted in mainstream if probably means that you're not for my people because my people aren't accepted in mainstream. If they're not tap dancing, if they're not entertaining, if they're not jumping out of gyms and running fast, they're not accepted. That's the truth. Think about the black people we celebrate in this country and think about what they do. And think about the fact that there are some Im immensely brilliant coders. There are some immensely brilliant lawyers. There are some immensely brilliant CEOs. And there are some immensely brilliant billionaires. We get the entertainer billionaires that we celebrate. So when I see somebody that is heavily backed by white America, I have to question it. Hell, when I see somebody that's just solely heavily backed and by us, I'm like, okay, what's going on? Because we don't rally around the things that actually have value. We rally around entertainment. We rally around conflict. We rally around drama. We have our own issues. But this clown, and that's exactly what he is, and his wackies, who I'm pretty sure will jump on here uh, the moment that they get it because that's what they do. They they don't have anything they're producing on their own. They don't have any content of any value that they're sharing. They're jumping on to troll. They're jumping on to give an opinion that doesn't have any foundation on fact. Because if you actually look at what he's saying, the two things I had a problem with, with Angel Reese was that she, nobody knew who she was. She wasn't famous until she, uh, the, did the you can't see me John Cena thing to Caitlin Clark when, when LSU beat them in the uh, championship last year that she was a walking double double she broke the college record for consecutive double doubles she was talked about she was by you Barbie long before Caitlin Clark no anyone knew who Caitlin Clark's name was and to say that was wrong then to ha then to refer to her as a thug and then back that up and have people out there with that narrative thug for what because she plays with heart and passion so does Caitlin Clark 
Caitlin Clark is very aggressive in the way she pushes off. Nobody's talking about that. Caitlin Clark is an in-your-face player. Nobody's talking about that. Hey, when you're inside those lines, go get what's there. If you don't take it, they're going to take it from you. I have no problem for either one of those young ladies going out there and doing it. Just know when you lose, you got to face the reaper. It's the way the game is played. It's the way I played the game. It's the way everybody I've ever watched play the game. And so that's just how it is. And so the idea that you want to see these people compete with passion and go hard at it. And then when the one you you are rooting for gets the rough end of the deal, you want to go on the assault and whine and complain. Hey, it's what it is. And then, uh, I mean, it's so many different things that I'm going to talk about later as far as media coverage on that, how... The losing team actually got the most media coverage after the championship this year. We can get into all to that and what that means, how that is. Literally, people had to be called on it. How Gail King literally sit as a representation of the media, as a, a, a media analyst, as a person that is supposed to be a journalist, sits there interviewing Don Staley and literally tells this woman in the interview that... I was cheering, you know, like so many other people, I was cheering for uh, Caitlin and Iowa to win and you broke our hearts. When did the media start being biased in reporting? And when do you disrespectfully say something like that to a person sitting in front of you? Now say, you could say you broke the hearts of a lot of Americans who were cheering for Caitlin and Iowa. Which, but then you're still acknowledging the fact that there's all of a sudden a uproar. Why are so many people cheering for Caitlyn? Outside of her range and her game, why? It's because she was built up to be the answer, the resolution of the whatever. And it didn't quite get there two years in a row. I can name a lot of players that happened to. But to, I've never seen anybody say you broke my heart or our heart as a professional journalist. And yet that's where it is. And these are the things that that the people that go out there to play the game the right way to be professional. Now, this the crazy thing is, this is something this is the person Don Staley that stood up after winning the championship and hearing all of that literally took time at the end of the celebration on the podium to acknowledge the impact that Caitlin has had on the game and to the and to the the chagrin of some of her black supporters who felt like she was doing I personally felt that it was the right thing to do on a professional level I felt like uh now on a personal level uh, you know, everybody's been digging at me, coming at me. Probably, I'm not the person to do that. Now, if somebody asks me, understanding how the game works and understanding diplomacy, I'm probably going to sit up and go, uh, "She's definitely had an impact on the game because she has." I'm not lying. I'm not sitting up building something up about that. She had an impact on the game, and to suggest that she didn't is being disingenuous. But what I am saying is, volunteering to do it, that wouldn't be me. But that's done. She did that. And that will probably have positive uh, impact on her personal career. And again, I've always said I'm never going to ask a black person to do something that the, the vast majority of blacks won't do in uh, for them. And that's to put their future and their career on the line to stand on principles in a square that nobody else is going to stand on with them. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sit up and demand something of them. I know what it's like to go out there and say I'm not backing down and lose clients. And I'm not talking about my personal clients. I'm talking about companies as clients to sit up and lose that because of a stance I take on a particular issue and I refuse to buy. I know what that looks like. And I know not, I know that I can't replace that with black dollars. I just can't. It will not happen. So I'm not going to ask Don to do that. So you do what you got to do for your future and your, and whatever. And I see you for who you are and how far you are willing to go or not go. And I, I put you in that place. Everybody ain't ready to take that ride. I get that. So on, on that note, all I'm saying is we are, are not and will not, at least I'm not, going to sit by and let Chub Rock sit over there 
and have these conversations. And I mean, all the stuff you could talk about and you are going after black women specifically right now, black women. And he's going after some other brothers and all that stuff like that. And the argument of the wackies, the Whitlock wackies, the argument for them is that, well, he went after, um, he went after, um, God, I just wrote the, I mean, I just sat up there and saw a post about this guy. Um, the kid out of AM, I cannot think of his name right now. His career went black, black, but you guys know what I'm talking about. And you'll probably be putting it off in the thing and it'll probably pop in my head, uh, before I finish this here. Um, um, finish this video. If not, you know who I'm talking about. But he was low hanging fruit. This kid was a crash waiting to happen. A rich kid who could play ball, could play, but never took the game serious because he didn't have to. He was rich. His parents are sick rich. He's still rich. And he gets to the league. Johnny Manziel gets to the league and um, just goes. With, so anybody taking a shot at Johnny Manziel uh, is hitting that low hanging fruit because everybody was taking a shot at Johnny Manziel. It was no risk going at Johnny Manziel. It was nothing. Everybody was talking about it. It was horrible. And that was the thing. So we don't get, you don't get no credit for talking about Johnny Manziel because Johnny was white. Johnny was clowning and Johnny admits it. Uh, I've seen some of his most re more recent interviews. I love the place he's in right now. I'm glad to see. And it proves that anybody can grow up, anybody can mature, anybody can come to a place and realize uh, that they've been doing some things they shouldn't do. And every day I wake up and realize there's a pl person in me that's better than the, there's a person inside of me that's better than the person that I'm presenting. And I need to become that person. That's something I wake up every day and strive for. So I get that. So, but outside of that, everybody he goes at tends to look like me in the sense of complexion, ethnicity, race, background, history. And, you know, if not gender, definitely the rest. And so my whole thing is, am I supposed to sit by and act like I don't see it? Am I supposed to sit up and make an excuse for it? Am I supposed to sit up and go around the way to act like it's not happening? And I'm not talking about the provoke things where you got beef with somebody, you're exchanging, uh, you know, you're exchanging uh, shots. That that that's that's between you and whatever you got going. I'm talking about, especially in this last sister with some old boss. She didn't ask for anything. She just made a text. I mean, made a t uh, tweet, I believe it was. And she just said, I thought that really people were really going to be mad at me. I thought they were really going to turn on me. And I'm so grateful for the support I've got. And he went off and attacked that. You know, she ain't that important. She ain't. She's the most decorated Olympic athlete of all time. She is. She has moves in the sport of gymnastics named after her. You know. To say that she's insignificant or, or she's not that important based on what? What are you judging it on? What criteria are you using? What is it that you and your wackies have on your scale that is measuring these measurements you're making when you are addressing black women? I need to know that because you are sitting there and even if you don't see it in your own mind, if there's some sort of dysphoria with you and how you see yourself or you don't see yourself as a black person, you see yourself as an American, that's all great. But let me ask you something. There are a bunch of people and anybody with an understanding of psychology at the most rudimentary levels understand that people are looking at you and seeing a black man and that representation is there and you can't do anything about it. You can't just sit up and act like it doesn't exist and so it has an impact and it has to be men like me that look like you that's ready to call you on it and say no that's not a black man that's a person with a black complexion that is answering to and serving and touching and catering to white interests and if you want me to stop talking about white black stop making it so damn obvious that there's a divide Stop making it obvious. There's so many other things that we can measure each other by. There's so many different things that we can have that look at the divide from the 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 the, the support of people who supported our and the people who supported everybody else they played. 
especially the schools where the teams were predominantly black like LSU and South Carolina. Look at the support, look at the rally, study the comments on all the posts on social media. That's something I do. I, I do this for a living. Study that and tell me, look at the comments and see some of the nasty comments that are made. See, what you guys don't realize is all this stuff that you post on social media is public access. And you and I gather that data. I've got literally servers with data from this stuff on it. And you cannot escape the patterns. You can't sit up and pretend they don't exist. So then I'm saying there has to be an answer to that. There has to be some dialogue behind that because this is a real issue. And until we get it to where it's not an issue, I will speak on it. And, and as far as all the wackies that show up and post what they post, number one, I don't read it. Number two, uh, I could care less about you pushing the freaking thumbs down button. So I, I, I'm not concerned with that. What I am concerned with is because I'm going to give respect no matter who you are, no matter what your race, no matter what. But I will come for you when you come for me or when I feel you are attacking something that I hold dear and I consider to be precious. And I expect anybody else to do the same darn gone thing. But this is the problem. There's not enough of us standing up. But I tell you what, if I have to stand by myself. I will. On that note, I'm about ready to get out of here. Look, if you like what you see and hear on this channel, click the like button, click the share button, subscribe. If you believe in the work that I've done in research and program development over the last 30 years in the black community, we need your support now more than ever. Look in the description box and see how you can give and follow suit. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.